some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we will explore the recent issue with Denver Metro Audits, a.k.a. Christopher Cordova. Because here recently he was tried and convicted of trespassing at the Social Security Administration building. You know how these frauditors are. They call themselves uh, freedom fighters or whatever and think they can get away with anything. But not this time, so let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're over here at the Social Security office, and they already told us that we can't come in. So, I am going to, uh... What's up? So this one's gonna be crazy, guys. I, I made the thumbnail, the title already, cops called, but just so I could have it ready, but the cops aren't called yet, but we're outside the social security office. They're already, security guard already came out, hollering that we're not allowed to record in there. So I just said, okay, because I don't want him to block us from coming in, but me and Sweet Tea, come on. We're about ready to just mob right in there right now. Hey guys, so. They were telling us we can't record in here, guys, right away. So we're just going to mob right in. It's illegal to record in here? What's the CRS or the CFR, you know? Huh? Don't worry about me, man. Mind your business, bro. Hey, don't touch me, bud. No, yes. We are, I'm going to you. You're allowed to outside. Hey, so. back up. Don't touch me, bud. What are you doing? Hey! Oh. Oh. Yep. What? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Right. Right. You're not allowed to touch me. You don't have authority over me, sir. Okay. Your job is to observe and report. Don't touch me. That's battery. No. That is one of many things that bothers me about frauditors. They think that a security guard's job is only to observe and report. But if you look on any career website, you will see that a security guard's job can be far more complex than that. So, which leads me to wonder, uh, are these guys actually this stupid that they can't look on a career website to confirm all this? Or do they know this and they're just trying to me mislead their audience? Either way, it doesn't make them look good at all. Yes, it is. You can record outside. Yeah, and I can record in here. You're mistaken. Don't touch me. You don't have authority to put your hands on me. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Tell the police whatever you want, man. I got you on the live stream assaulting me. First Amendment auditors, 8,000 South Park Lane. Self Security Office, I have First Amendment auditors. He's got us backed into this corner. Yeah. Yeah, you're free to leave. And you were already told me you cannot record inside. You cannot record in here. What's the law? What's the CFR? Oh, that is so easy to look up. You should have tried it yourself. A few minutes of actual research instead of oh, acting like a complete dipstick, and you wouldn't be in the trouble you are in now. Yeah, you do. There's no law that says we can't record in here. Yes, it does. You are so late. Well, tell me the CFR then. Because of the special search that we have, because we have people's personal information inside, and you cannot come inside. Yeah, you're mistaken, man. No. Nope. Yeah. You're absolutely mistaken. There's a 2018 Department yeah, of Homeland Security. I've never been briefed about that. That's okay. why I told you, you can record outside, not inside. Okay, well, you need to show me, the, you need to show me the CFR then. And when the police come, I'm going to press charges on you. What's your name? You can't put your hands on me, man. What's your name? What's your, you can't put your hands on me, though. You don't have authority. You're a security guard. You're not a police officer. You don't have authority to put your hands on me, man. What's wrong with you? Think you can just come up and touch members of the public? You're a security guard. Triple, uh, triple canopy. Asset avert. You'll have to excuse my friend. He's a little slow. Right there in plain sight. No, he doesn't have to give us the CRS. So they got us here in the foyer, guys. Uh, called the police on us immediately. I knew they were going to. Won't tell us the CFR that says we can't record. 
Um, they said it's because there's private information in there. So, Well, yeah, private information that they don't want getting out, you know, to protect the customers. And then they, yeah, they grabbed me, dude. This guy right here, this freaking clown right here, comes out aggressive, hollering uh, orders at me, unlawful orders. And then he wants to come and, and grab my arm and grab my camera. My camera got all messed up. Lies! Lies! You are the prince of lies! Memo. They don't want to listen to it. They said they're showing me this policy right here, this piece of paper uh, that says no recording. It's just a piece of paper. There's no CFR. There's no law. It's their policy. AFA, what's up? Good to have you, man. Uh, yeah, so thanks, guys, for posting those phone numbers. Again, we're at the Social Security Administration in Littleton. It's, the address is 8,000 something. Not sure the exact address. I think it's Windermere. Here in Littleton, Colorado, I came up here, guys, and I uh, had my live stream ready to go. And then this guy right here, Chavez, came out before we even entered the building, telling us this is that this is federal property and we can't record in here. So I said, okay, cool, have a good day. And then uh, we decided to go live because we knew that he was gonna it was gonna be crazy. So we went live, walked in here into the foyer. We didn't even get all the way in, and the guy came in, put his hands on me, pushed me back, grabbed my camera. My camera got all messed up. Uh, so crazy, man guy thinks that he has authority the guy thinks that he can put his hands on uh, free members of the public yeah, this is ridiculous and the, the the masks are because they have a, a policy in here that masks are required regardless of vaccination uh status which is also a policy so yeah if i i was thinking about going in but they'll just block me right away Nope. Hey, don't touch me! Yeah. Don't touch me! What are you doing? You can't touch me! You can't touch me! What's wrong with you? Now I'm pressing charges on you too. Yeah. Guaranteed, bud. I got it on I got it on camera. You got it on the live stream. You got 420 people in here watching you, bud. You can't touch me. Your job is to observe and report. That's it. Lies! Lies! You are the prince of lies! You don't put your hands on free members of the public unless I commit a crime and I'm not committing crimes. <laughs> uh, but this is crazy, guys. I knew this was gonna happen. I've been wanting to do this office for a while and I just recently saw a uh, Bay Area Transparency's uh, episode and it, it kind of reminded me to come over here. Uh, so that's why I came over here, and I knew it's, I knew it was going to be like this. I knew. You know, these frauders are making it very easy for us to prosecute them whenever the time comes, because they actually film their crimes, and that's exactly what happened in this case as well. Because you know what, the whole courtroom was able to witness the video. Okay, you know what, that's a next level stupidity right there, because you know what. You're only making it easier to be convicted. This goes inside. All right, so he didn't even make contact with me whatsoever. They're gonna explain the situation to him and see what he does. Littleton's been good so far, guys. I've had pretty good interactions with Littleton, but not all. Uh, hey, thank you. So we're here, guys. And uh, like I said, there's gonna be one of two uh, outcomes here is what I'm predicting here. A, this officer right here, this corporal, is going to do his job and tell them there's nothing we can do. And I'm honoring my oath of the Constitution, and there's no law that states that uh, that we can trespass him. Wrong again, douchebag. There are several degrees of uh, trespassing in the state of Colorado. You're not too bright, are you? Or B, he's going to tell me that I have to leave. I'm going to tell him, get your handcuffs out, bud, because I'm not leaving on public property. This is my right. I have a right to be here, period.
I'm not going to walk in now, public tour, because that guy's right there, Garden. He'll shove me back. I already, I don't need to keep agitating it. They already did their, their uh, tyrannical stuff. Hey, whoa, no. Hey, 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 no. Hey, no. No. hey don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Get out. Get oh, out. Get push out. me out. Push me out. Get out. Get out. We already told you, man. We already told you. You should not be recording here, man. Don't touch me. That's twice now. I didn't touch you. Yeah, you move did. Your foot. Move your foot. Move your foot. I need you to move that foot or it's going to get spanked. You're going to assault me? All right, you got to close the door. Later in the void. You're violating this man's First Amendment right to film inside of a publicly funded building. There is signs posted. No. Right. Okay, but he's, he's not coming in. I'm not coming in right now. Glass windows. Did you have all glass windows? Policy? We're violating the policy? Yeah. You just admitted that that's a policy. You're not a policy enforcement officer. A You're a law enforcement agency. officer. Policies. But policies aren't a laws. Policy is not a law. You are embarrassed. Well, you just you just just uh, you said it's a federal law, but you just said it's a it's a policy. So which is it? It's a federal policy yeah. that's enforced by a federal law. I'm totally. So the policy so you guys are going to face a lawsuit because what he just said and what you have done, you have messed up today, my friend. You, you, have, you have his information? You yes. Eight, eight, nine. I mean, are you sure you, hey, do you need to grab the door? Are you, are you scared? Do you need to grab the door? I don't want to leave you in fear. You grab the door. So are you just staying here now for personal security to keep us from coming? You're walking away? Okay, because when you leave, we're going to go in here. You mad. You mad as shit! <laughs> you mad as shit, boy! Yeah, walk your chain. Walk your bitch ass on in the back. Okay, should I go in? Here I go, guys. Great! They're gonna arrest you, man. Ready? There we go. I would like to thank my subscriber, Silvio, for uh, emailing this to me. I very much appreciate it. Now, let's all enjoy the reading of this judgment right here from his trial. And please do leave your opinions in the comments below. I would love to read them. Because my personal opinion of this, a man who represents himself in a trial has a fool for a client. And he is a huge fool indeed, because you know what? He wanted to create a case law in his name. And well, he succeeded in a way because he totally failed in this particular case. Chris Cordova, you are a blooming moron. Court for the District of Colorado. Civil Action, United States of America, Plaintiff, V. Christopher J. Cordova, Defendant. Verdict, Michael E. Hegarty, United States Magistrate Judge. This matter came before me for a bench trial on March 16, 2023. The information charged, two counts, one, failing to comply with official signs of a prohibitory, regulatory, and directory nature and with lawful direction of federal police officers and other authorized individuals under 41 CFR section 102 to 74.385 and 2 unlawfully photographing federal property under 41 CFR section 102.74.420 based on the following i find mr cordova guilty on both counts facts the underlying facts of this case are not disputed Mr. Cordova went to the offices of the United States Social Security Administration, SSA, at 8000 South Park Lane, Littleton, Colorado, SSA office on Tuesday, August 2, 2022. He used a video camera as he entered the building, being a self-described journalist. This was an ordinary business day, during normal work hours, and in the SSA office were SSA employees, persons seeking the SSA's assistance, contract security officers, and Homeland Security uniformed officers. Virtually the entirety of Mr. Cordova's experience in the SSA office that day, and certainly anything of relevance, was 
recorded, and material portions were replayed during the trial. The SSA office is a freestanding building with the SSA as the sole tenant. As one enters the building from the outdoors through exterior glass doors, there is a rectangular space of perhaps several hundred square feet with no furnishings of any kind, with plate glass windows at the fore and aft and frame construction on the right and left. The glass in this space had taped signs in several places stating that photography and videography were prohibited, citing federal law and SSA policy. The signs bore the SSA's official seal. There was also a sign posting the SSA offices, hours as 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. As one walks through this first space, there is another set of glass doors, these interior doors lead to the office space in which SSA employees do business with the public. Immediately inside the office space on the left are chairs for waiting customers. The rest of the office space includes desks, tables, other chairs, a check-in kiosk, and five stations, marked A.E., with partial walls between each, at which customers approach and talk confidentially with SSA employees who are behind glass windows. On the day in question, Mr. Cordova entered the exterior glass doors and filmed inside the first space. He was there perhaps three hours. Although contract and uniformed law enforcement officers were with him much of the time, they did not impede his filming or monologue. Because there were large plate glass windows on either side of the space, Mr. Cordova was able to freely film what was occurring beyond the interior, second set of glass doors. He filmed persons going in and out of the office, persons sitting in the office, and persons being assisted by SSA employees, with virtually an unobstructed view of the entirety of the office area. At a defined moment during his visit, Mr. Cordova declared his intention to walk through the second set of doors into the office area and continue filming. The officers who were present informed him that was against SSA regulations and that he would be arrested if he proceeded. The posted signs informed him of the same prohibition. And he was shown a copy of the actual regulation. Mr. Cordova testified at trial that when he went to the SSA office, he already knew the regulation and its contents. Further, immediately inside the interior, second set of doors was an obtrusive sign on a stand stating, P. Personal electronic devices, cell phones, cameras, may not be used to take photographs or to make video recordings. This sign also had the official SSA seal. Mr. Cordova indeed entered the SSA office area while filming and monologuing and was arrested at that time. These charges ensued. Legal authority. First, I begin with the proposition, although not raised by either party at trial, that the regulations in question purport to impose criminal penalties. United States v. Baldwin, 745 F.3d, 1027, 1031, 10th Circle 2014. These regulations jurisdictionally form the proper basis for a criminal charge. I.D. Second, I should ask um, e. that the ordinary meaning of the regulations language expresses its purpose and enforce it according to its terms. See Hart v. Reliance Standard Life. Inns Company. 560 U.S. 242, 251, 2010, internal quotation marks omitted. When called on to resolve a dispute over a law's meaning, this court normally seeks to afford the law's terms their ordinary meaning. Ms. Chavez v. Garland, 141 S.C.T. 1474, 1480, 2021. I believe this applies with equal force to interpreting a regulation. As the Supreme Court has noted with regard to federal regulations, a court must apply all traditional methods of interpretation to any rule and must enforce the plain meaning those methods uncover. Kaiser v. Wilkie, 139 SCT 2400, 2419, 2019. The Tenth Circuit has further stated, W. Hen interpreting regulations, we begin our analysis by Examining the plain language of the text of the regulation, giving the words their ordinary meaning. If the meaning of the text is clear, our endeavor is at an end, and we must enforce the regulation in accordance with its plain meaning. 
NatRes Def Council v. McCarthy, 993 F.3D 1243, 1251, 10th Circle 2021, quoting B.D. of EDUC, of Gallup McKinley CNTY. SCHS v. Native AM. Disability Law Center, Inc., 959 F.3D 1011, 1013, 10th Circle 2020. You, unless there is a clear manifestation to, the contrary, general words, not specific or limited, should be construed as applicable to cases or matters of like kind with those described by the particular words. United States v. Stever, 222, U.S. 167, 174, 1911. Finally, both the Supreme Court and the Tenth Circuit commonly rely on an ordinary dictionary to ascertain the meaning of a law's wording. C. Example, Lamar, Archer and Coffrin, LLPV. Appling, 138 SCT 1752, 1759, 2018, using Webster's Third New International Dictionary. 1976, Nat Res Def Council v. McCarthy, 993 F.3D 1243, 1252, 10th Circle 2021, using Merriam Webster Dictionary. Analysis. I. Count 1. Count 1 alleges Mr. Cordova violated 41 CFR Section 102 to 74.385. Under that section, p. Ursons in and on property must at all times comply with official signs of a prohibitory, regulatory, or directory nature and with the lawful direction of federal police officers and other authorized individuals. I.D. Based on my analysis of count 2, see infrasection 2. I find beyond a reasonable doubt the SSA law enforcement officers gave Mr. Cordova lawful direction, s, to not film in the SSA interior office and warned him that he would be arrested if he did, yet Mr. Cordova failed to comply. ID Mr. Cordova also failed to comply with official signs of a prohibitory, regulatory, and directory nature. ID Incidentally, unlike the language in the following regulation, under Count 2, Mr. Cordova does not challenge the meaning of these words too. Count 2. Count 2 alleges Mr. Cordova violated 41 CFR Section 102 to 74.420, which prohibits photographing s. pace occupied by a tenant agency without permission of the occupying agency. ID at a. b. It permits photographing, b, yielding entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. ID at, c. I accept Mr. Cordova was filming for news purposes. So, was Mr. Cordova in space occupied by the SSA, or was he filming in a subsection, c, space, at the time he was arrested? I start with subsection, c. From the textual presentation in the regulation, subsection, c, is, clearly intended to address a different physical space than subsections, a, and, b, describe. The, spaces identified in subsection, c, appear to describe a series of like-kind words and should be, interpreted as such. I agree with the following pertinent explanation. A justum generis refers to the principle that when a general term follows a specific one, the general term should be understood as a reference to subjects akin to the one with specific enumeration. Ali v. Federal Bureau of Prisons, 552 U.S. 214, 223, 128 SCT 831, 169L. Ed. 2D 680, 2008, internal quotation marks and citation omitted. Relatedly, the doctrine of Nossiter associates. Under all the interpretation rules and methods described above, I do not hesitate to ascribe to the first four of these a meaning that encompasses the first space into which Mr. Cordova entered on August 2, 2022, the glassed entry space where, logically, persons seeking to do business with the SSA would collect themselves, wipe their feet, brush off snow, or otherwise prepare to enter the SSA office. No SSA business would logically occur in this space, nor did any occur during the hours of filming on August 2, 2022. At first glance, the word auditorium has an apparently different meaning than the previous four words, 
but when applying a justum generis and nociter associes in the context of this regulation, it describes a space in which the public congregates but would not be engaging in individual, personal transactions with the occupying agency, corporation, school, church, theater, or other organization. On the other hand, through that interior, second set of doors, the SSA conducted its primary business of assisting the public. During Mr. Cordova's filming, members of the public, including children, were indeed conducting business there, people were in chairs waiting for their turn, a customer check-in kiosk with a video screen was there, along with other indicia of a typical office setting. Mr. Cordova argues that 41 CFR section 102-74.420 is unconstitutionally vague in employing the terms defined above. He contends that the area in which he was arrested could reasonably be included within the subsection C list. I disagree under the facts and circumstances of this case. Case 1, 22, P07015 MEH Document 16 filed March 20, 23 USDC Colorado page 6 of 8, 7. The Tenth Circuit in the Baldwin case has noted in this regard, the Supreme Court has told us, repeatedly, that the relevant question in void for vagueness challenges is merely whether the defendant before us had fair notice from the language of the law that the particular conduct which he engaged in was punishable. 745F.3D at 1031-32, quoting Parker v. Levy, 417 U.S. 733, 755, 1974. It is clear based on the regulation, the signage in the SSA entryway, the instructions given by law enforcement, and Mr. Cordova's own understanding of the law that he had fair notice of the law and that his conduct in filming beyond the interior glass doors was punishable. The facts established Mr. Cordova knew the SSA and its law enforcement officials. Interpreted the law as prohibiting filming inside the second set of interior doors where the SSA was conducting business with its customers. He had fair notice of the language of the regulation and that his conduct would be punishable under the government's interpretation of it. Granted, he has a philosophical disagreement with that interpretation for which he was prepared to, and in fact, expected to, be arrested. Although I respect his right to challenge the law and test his constitutional rights to their outer limit, he is wrong in this instance. Under a different set of facts, where a person might enter from the outdoors directly into a federal office, the outcome could be different. Here, there was a distinct entryway from the outdoors, corresponding with a subsection, C, space, after which was a set of interior doors leading, to a distinct and unmistakable office space, corresponding with subsections, A, and, B. Without, the SSA's permission, to film in this office, which Mr. Cordova, did not have, he violated the law. For these reasons, I find beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Cordova entered in and on federal property and unlawfully photographed space occupied by a federal agency, without permission, in violation of 41 CFR section 102-74.420. Case 1, colon 22, P07015 MEH, Document 16, filed March 20, 23, USDC Colorado page 7 of 8. 8. Conclusion. For the foregoing reasons, Mr. Cordova is adjudicated guilty on counts 1 and 2 of the information, and the court will enter judgment consistent with this verdict. This matter will be set for sentencing at a time convenient for all parties. Entered March 20, 2023, at Denver, Colorado.